Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Can somebody say yes or no? I guess you hear. Yeah, yeah we can hear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, today we have to cover uh, this material uh, about control structure, which is extremely simple, same control structures and in all languages. So not something very exciting, but uh, we have to go through them uh, because there are plenty of them. And before that, let me just remind you that in the case of put string, you can insert inside any string, any content. So if you want to have string A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and then you want to insert inside, for example, product of two numbers or power, uh, A times B or A to power B, uh, you can do that. So if A is two and B is three, then product is A times B six, and you are going to get A, B, C. Here is inserted six, then you have D, E, F, which is this string here, and then two to three is eight, you have inserted eight and G, H, I. So, uh, this is what is uh, obtained by inserting uh, numerical expressions inside a string. And a put string has this capability of uh, doing that. And uh, this is good for uh, any kind of formatting of text. Also, if you have multiple assignments like ABC equals seven, uh, this is returning a value. So. Uh, same as in scheme you have, or in uh, if you want in C++ also, this returns a value. But here explicitly, when you say x equals this here, you get seven as the result in interactive mode. So it must be, <coughs> must be a returned value that comes here. Uh, now, uh, let us speak a little bit about uh, loops. Uh, so until loop, is same as in all procedural languages. So you loop until you have condition for exit. So condition for exit is telling you when to finish the loop. You can have uh, do or new line. So if you have uh, that you uh, want to write all statement in the single line, then you use do. If you uh, have that you have multiple uh, lines in the body, then you don't need to put do if you don't want, but until an end must be uh, here. For example, I want to display x and x square. So uh, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, uh, square of one is one, square of two is four, square of three is nine. So until x is greater than three, we are going to start with 0.5 and increment in each iteration uh, with 0.5. So I have until x is greater than three, display x and x square, and then increment uh, this uh, point uh, x for 0.5. So we have a 0.5, one, 1 1.5 up to three, and here are squares. Uh, you can also, have an array, array is defined here as one, two, three, four. And then uh, until i is greater than three, we are going to uh, display this array and increment uh, uh, i. So uh, i of zero, uh, i uh, zero uh, will give me array of zero, which is the first component one, it is here, and then this is uh, array of one, array of two, array of three, and then when it is greater than three, then we have to stop because we will go out of bounds and get to nil, uh, which is of course not what we want. While and until can be used as modifiers, therefore you can have an expression that is executed while Boolean expression is satisfied or expression is executed until uh, Boolean expression for termination uh, uh, for exit is satisfied. So uh, uh, this Boolean expression until in until must be false to stay inside. Modifiers should be in the same line as the expression. So this is used for short expressions or 
if you want to use it for longer, you have to use begin and block. And this is shown in this example here. So if I have x, which is equal to zero, and incrementing x in each x in each iteration, so x is x plus one, and I stay in that loop while x is less than five. So you have that you are incrementing that one, two, three, four, five, and then five plus one becomes six, and you go uh, out uh, because uh, it is no longer less than five. That becomes five, uh, uh, you go out. So it must be less than five. Uh, so from uh, zero to four, all of them. Uh, and print the elements of an array. Array is one, two, three, four. And now we have more than one statement here, uh, while and put string are in the same line. So uh, this is the way how this is usually uh, applied. Uh, however, if you have uh, until loop that uh, has multiple lines, you have to put begin end. And then you say uh, put string array of i, increment i, and do that until i is uh, greater than three. This until is condition for exit from the loop. So uh, you have you stay in the loop as long as condition for exit is not satisfied. It is false. Here is one beautiful way how to display array. Array can be used as a stack. And stack is of course control structure where you have push and pop. Okay, now push is appending to the end of array and pop is taking last element of array and reducing by one. So I can say array pop, array pop, since array is one, two, three, four, will give me the last element, this four. So this is what pop is going to return. Uh, and then we'll reduce array by one and get array one, two, three. So uh, uh, this array pop, is going to give me value four, and then the array will be one, two, three. So I go and ask, is the array now empty? It is not. Then I'm going to get three, two, and one. So pop, 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 you are taking last one before that, so four, three, two, one, and after that, the array becomes empty. So uh, when array is empty, then you go out of this loop. Of course, this loop is displaying uh, array, but is also emptying the array. So at the end, array is empty, no more elements inside. Here, when you uh, display components of array, array remains unchanged. You have one, two, three, four, but after that, array becomes empty. For loop is loop through elements of an enumerable object. Now, enumerable object can be array, hash, range, whatever has components. So, uh, when you have uh, an object that is compound, that has components inside, there are two possibilities. The first is that these uh, components are ordered, that uh, you have first, second, third, etc. that you have ordinal data type, uh, like in Pascal. The other possibility is that you have a set. So uh, the set consists of components, but there is no order of these components. Each iterator is working in this way. It is taking one component from that uh, one component from that set of components, delivering that to the user, and after that, we have that uh, we can use that in the loop. So, for variable uh, in collection, do body so. It is going through an array, component by component, or through a set, component by component. But if you have sets, like for example, in mathematics, you say, I have set A, B, C, three components, A, B, C. Nobody knows which one is the first, which one is the last, they are not ordered. If you say set C, B, A is the same kind of set. Uh, set that has a Coke, Pepsi, and 7-Up, is the same set as 7up, Pepsi, and Coke. So uh, it has the same component inside. Therefore, if you go through these sets uh, with for loop, it is going to take a component and will tag this component as processed. 
And then next time when you go with each inside, it is going to give you next one and next one in arbitrary order, if they are not ordered. So that's the way how for loop works with each. But very frequently, for is used for processing collection that is either an array or set. So if it is an array, one, two, three, four, we can say for component in array, put string component. And this is very simple, very understandable. So take any component from this uh, array, put it in this variable component and display component. So you get one, two, three, four. This is displaying components of array with for loop. <coughs> However, you can go through sets also. And one typical set is a hash. Hash is the set of pairs. So you have key, which is one, and the value, which is one. So the syntactical, the syntactical definition of hash is inside pair of braces. You have to put colon and put the name of the first key. So this is one. Uh, this here is an arrow equals with uh, greater than this is the arrow. So uh, you have one arrow, one, two, arrow, two, three, arrow, three. So you have three pairs, one, one, two, two, three, three. And then when I say for key and uh, value in hash, I'm going to instantiate key with one, two, three, and value with one, two, three num numerical. So when I display that, I get one, one, two, two, three, three. However, if I repeat that for the second time, exactly the same as here, uh, then I'm going to have that uh, it can come out of order because this is not an array. If I have A, B, C, that is one, two, three, I can get two, three, one, and this is completely legitimate. And then when I repeat that and other times, again, hash one, two, three, it gives me one, two, three in this order. So this is written exactly the same way as here, but the order of processing is arbitrary. So language processor is deciding in what uh, order to go. If you have uh, a matrix, so you have an array of arrays. So I have one, two, and three, four here. Then for element in this matrix, you have that you select first component and then second and third and fourth and this e is going to be one two three four that is displayed here so this is this one two three four here however <coughs> if you have two of them for e1 and e2 in this then you are assumed to have pairs that you are going to instantiate so the first pair one uh, uh, e1 e2 will be instantiated with one two and then when I display that, I'm going to get one, two. And then uh, when this iterates next time, E1 and E2 are going to be instantiated with three, four. When I display, we'll get this three, four. However, if we have a uh, array of arrays, then of course, uh, this is normal that these two values are going to be instantiated here. But if I want to instantiate two, from uh, something that has single components, then I cannot uh, uh, instantiate two objects from single object. So I'm going to get E1, which is one, but E2, because there is no second component here, is going to be nil. So one, nil, two, nil, three, nil, four, nil. And if I do the same thing with put string, we'll get one empty, two empty, three empty, four empty. So pay attention that if you have multiple variables here, you have to have objects that can provide inputs for these multiple variables. Like in the case of matrix, it is okay. But in the case of uh, where this is uh, not the matrix, this is uh, not going uh, to work uh, properly. Um, for a loop can be used uh, one inside the other. So this is an example of three, four loops, one inside the other, one is changing A, B, and C. And I am uh, uh, displaying A, B, C, and this voting function uh, one or true when A plus B plus C is greater than one. So if I have uh, two uh, or three ones, I'm going to give true. So zero, 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 
is false, zero, zero, 001 is false, but uh, zero, 011 one is true because I have two or three uh, ones. So I have true, true, true here, and this is majority uh, function. So it is giving uh, uh, cases where I have more than one uh, once in this combination. Okay. And you can, in all time, you could put that in this ugly single line, forget this, and don't use this colon because this is not going to be supported anymore. <clears throat> Iterators, times each up to down to map. Now, times is the loop with uh, implicit counter. Repeat uh, five times something. Each is this iterator that returns each component of uh, enumerated object. And up do and down to, we use them to go through sequence of uh, integers up or down. And map is the same map that we have in scheme. So applying a uh, function to enumerable object to each component of enumerable object. So general form of iterator is that you have object and then iterator name, for example, times. And then if you want, you can use a variable to put component in variable and have loop body. Now these braces here can be replaced by do and if you want. So you can say, say uh, object, apply iterator to that object and then put uh, this object that is selected in this way in this variable and apply to loop body. So uh, this is uh, uh, very frequently done in uh, this way that you have that object is just an integer and here you have n times that you want to repeat this block okay you can have this as a constant three times uh, uh, repeat this block or you can have here an expression and then expression is evaluated and returns for example three and then you again three times uh, iterate uh, and re repeat this block uh, we can have either uh, and repetitions or uh, without using uh, index or we can put index in this variable. So you can say n times perform this, but I want to have index here. So this is like for loop for i equals zero through n and variable will be zero, one, two, three up to n. So this is n times without visible uh, counter and this is n times with visible counter. Here is example. When you say three times, put string thanks, it is giving you thanks, thanks, thanks. So three times saying thanks. You can also say n times print thanks, and this n is now variable. So variable say two times print thanks, you get thanks, thanks. Or you can say n plus one times, uh, uh, n plus one uh, times print thanks. So you are going to have uh, that if n is two, it is going to give you three times uh, thanks. So here is three times thanks. So uh, if you have uh, numerical values, uh, you say n is four and four times I want to repeat something. Now, uh, what is happening in Ruby, this n is buffered variable. That means when you give here n two times, this value four is stored somewhere in n auxiliary internal variable of these times method. Therefore, I can use this n as a free variable. Uh, so uh, this is n is n times n. And this is not going to ruin this value here because it is already stored somewhere inside. Uh, this is the very ugly way of writing program because I'm, uh, it is much better that I separate these things. That I want to show you that this is possible because it is buffered. I do not advise you to do this thing, things like that. I would simply put here four and use this variable n if I want to use it. So four times four is 16, 16 times 16, 256 and so on and so forth. So it is performing this loop four times, but it is better to use some other variable name here. So uh, because this uh, modifying the parameter of the loop inside the loop somehow can be misinterpreted as changing this value here. 
which is not the case because this value is copied initially inside and cannot be modified. Then uh, we have the possibility to compute square root in this way. For example, if I want square root of nine, then I have this iteration x is 0.5 times x plus n divided by x, and this repeat six times. So when I repeat that six times, I start with nine and get three. Three is square root of six, and it works in this way. You see how accuracy increases in each iteration. If I say six times uh, uh, print n, so this value of index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is going to be printed and you will get this result here. Each returns component of data when you have an enumerable uh, data in object. So uh, that component can be used in block, can be stored in the variable and processed inside the block. So you can set here is an object, take each and every component, put it in this variable component, and then perform loop body with it. Uh, when we do that, uh, here is an array, one, two, three, and say each component of this array put in this component. And then here is the block. What is going to happen? Well, uh, put string. So I have that array is one, two, three. For each component, display one and two and three, and you have this one, two, three. Or instead of these uh, braces, uh, you can put do end. So for each uh, in A, for each component in A, so A is object, each is method. And then this here is uh, uh, also component that is used by this method. So you can put component in this uh, variable component and display component, you get one or A. You can put directly the array. So you can say uh, one, two, three, each. So each means first take one, then you take two, then take three. So there are three of them and three times perform this operation with each component separately and you get one, two, three. If you perform this uh, as hash, so I have hash A1, B2, C3, and say for each component in hash, I get key and value and display them. And they displayed are in two, three, one. Since this is the set, you can go in any order to them. And uh, in this case, we have this kind of order and that is legitimate. Doesn't have to go left to right because these are sets. It is not ordinal data type where you know who is first, who is second, who is third. Um, up to, is used for uh, counting. So uh, two up to n is a method that is applied to integer two. So integer two is the object to which we apply a method up to. Up to is going to increment in each iteration the value. So I can say I have a variable f and then <coughs> this value uh, two, three, four, five, up to n will be stored in counter. Therefore, f is f times counter, and counter f is initially one, then one times two, and then times three, times four, times n will return n factorial at the end. We can have uh, two possibilities to write uh, this, uh, either up to or down to. So if you have expression, up to expression, you can put pair of braces or say uh, do uh, and uh, this is also possible. Both of them are okay. Do and is something that I use more because I like to see end at the end of each expression. The same situation can be done with down to expression, down to expression, and you can have also do and as the syntax at the end. Example time is simple. One up to four, put a variable in four and display this four, it puts string. You get one, two, three, four. So one up to four is counting one, two, three, four, putting variables in N and displaying them here. Or you can say uh, K plus one. So one plus one is two up to uh, uh, one plus three, four. So from two to four, display N and you get two, three, four. Uh, you can have 
uh, also uh, written that in the way with the using the same variable or different variable. So here is k plus one to k plus three with putting here k. So this is ultimately ugly uh, and avoid this. Uh, if you can put some other variable, put some other variable, nothing will happen if you write in this way and it is going to create mess because you think that these variables are uh, changed in each iteration and then that they uh, affect the parameters of the loop. They don't. This is buffer. You take k plus one and k plus three before up to iteration starts working. And then you can use k any way you want. So you can reuse it here. You get one variable and you reduce readability. So I, I dislike that. Uh, uh, it is written avoid. Same is here. Uh, one up to four, n is n plus one, and uh, put string n. So I am now uh, putting each variable in n and then increment this by one. So it is like for loop where you increment uh, yourself the variable that is in incremented by the for mechanism, which is of course not permitted in C++ and similar languages. So don't do it here. Here it works. It is uh, here everything works, but uh, we advise that this is not a good idea. Now <clears throat> we can have also uh, down to. So if you go from 100 down to one, you can uh, keep adding this n to this k. So k is k plus n, and you get as the sum 50/50. Now. Uh, you can apply uh, up to and down to to all ordinal data types. So ordinal data type is uh, this uh, uh, integer here, or it is here a character. So from character zero to character nine, display these characters and you are going to get zero, one through nine. From A through Z, display all characters. This is also going to work Even with strings from initial to last string, if it is clear what is inside, you can do it in this way. Uh, map is same as map in scheme. So it applies expression to each component of an enumerable object. So you have enumerable object that has uh, plenty of components and you have a function that will apply to each of them. And you get now a collection of results. So here is array, one, two, three, and we say we want to map uh, uh, this function one divided by x to the square uh, to the third degree to components of this map. So you have one divided x to the third degree, apply that to one, and you get as the result to one. Then uh, you take two, two to the third degree is eight. One divided by eight is uh, 0.125. So what you have here is that uh, all components of this uh, enumerable object, one, two, three, are replacing this x. And then what happens is uh, we want to display this value. So we apply what is written here to each and every component of this uh, array, one, two, three. This can be applied to ranges also. So the range from one to 2000, I'm computing the sum of series that has one divided by x squared. So one divided by one square plus one divided by two square plus one divided by three square. It is interesting that this uh, sum is the value that multiplied by six and taken square root gives you pi. So pi 3.14 is the sum of this series. <clears throat> so this is square of six times uh, uh, sum is pi. So if you take six times sum, take square root, then you get pi as the result. Uh, so you can check other series also, like for example, uh, this one divided by x times x plus one has the sum which is one. And it is 0.999 because I go just in uh, to, to, to 2000 components, no more. Now, if I add a, a, a series like this, one divided by x times x plus two, uh, so one, three, two, five, et cetera, you have the sum and you can do that either 
going from one to 20,000 or for 20,000 down to one. When I do that, I get similar results, but they differ in the last digit, which is yet another ex uh, example of non commutativity of addition. If I go from small values to large values and from large values to small values, then I'm going to get different uh, results. And it is uh, usually better to go from small values to uh, from small values to, to large values. So this one is more accurate. A uh, step is an iterator that is going with uh, real increments. So uh, from zero to three with step four. So zero is the object which is considered to be initial value. Step is iterator that is going to create all values between zero and three with step 0.4. So this X is going to be zero, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2 up to 2.8. Uh, if we add 0.4 to this, we get 3.2. This is greater than three and it is not going to be uh, uh, in the loop. So I am displaying X and sine of X. Of course, sine is the function that belongs to math class. So this is the class math dot sine. Uh, this is object in this class. So you have to put uh, math dot sine. Uh, and then you get this uh, table here of sine function. If you want to go from zero to one with step one divided by seven, this is also legitimate uh, way to do things. Uh, and you get uh, this table here. The only thing that I would suggest not put here one, but put here one uh, uh, point zero zero one, just in case that if one divided by seven is little less than one, then you are a little more than one, then you are not going to get the last value. So uh, this can be dangerous. And I suggest that you put here a little more than one and that works fine. Uh, 13579 uh, each do display them. So 13579 uh, each is taking each of them. You can go uh, in with each iteration through ranges from minus five to five. You get all of them here. You can also have for loop that is going in range uh, for variable in this range, display variable or for variable in this range of characters from zero to uh, from A through Z, display all of them, and this is also going to work correctly. Now we have collect, uh, select, reject, and inject these four brothers that are uh, similar. Iterator collect is very similar to map. It executes block for each element of the enumerable object and collects and returns value into an array. So it is same as map, 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 map function to an object, but here it is packing the result in an array and returning that array. So you have array equals enumerable object dot collect, and then you put components and process them with this function. So this is something that is done also by select, but select does that conditionally. If the condition is satisfied, then you do that. And reject says, if condition is satisfied, don't do it. So reject that. So uh, collect and reject are, uh, uh, select and reject are negation of each other and collect applies to everybody. So here is an example that we make this perfectly clear. If I have an array, one, two, three, and say collect all components uh, and compute third degree of them. So collect all axes and compute uh, third degree of them and put that in this array called cubes. So what I have here puts a uh, string cubes, I get one, eight, 27, because, because this is an array. If I have a range, going from one through 10 and say, select those axes that satisfy a uh, uh, condition that they are even number. So X modulo two is zero. 
So don't do anything else, but only those that have this condition satisfied. So what is this? This is a for loop with an if statement inside. So this is very frequently used in programming and therefore select is used for that. So events are now an array that is taking range from one through 10 and selecting those that are even numbers and you get two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. If you say reject even numbers, reject even numbers, then you are going to display only uh, those that are, uh, that are out. So one, three, five, seven, nine. So you are creating an array of odds, displaying uh, this array of odds, one, three, five, seven, nine, and then asking, tell me, uh, what is the class of these odds? And the class is array, obviously, because you get an array. So it is packed. All these results, one, three, five, seven, nine, are packed in this array or in this array or in this array. So cubes, evens, and nodes, all three of them are arrays. Inject is the value that is injected as initial value in an accumulator. Very frequently, you have the situation when you want to perform, for example, addition of components of array. And you say sum equals sum plus A of I. So you have initial value, which is accumulated uh, and incremented in each iteration. So you create, you have collection of components, you inject initial value in that uh, accumulator, and then in each iteration, you have that accumulator is incremented or decremented or multiplied with this operation with component. So this is a strange syntax. Uh, where you can have that you inject initial value. Uh, so you have that accumulator is initial value, or you have that accumulator is the first component if you don't have this inject initial value, if inject comes without initial value. So here is example. I have one through five, inject zero. So what is going to happen? I have accumulator and component. So this zero is stored in accumulator up front. And then in each iteration, I have that component one, two, three, four, five is stored in component. And we have accumulator is accumulator plus component. So you have uh, zero plus one plus two plus three plus four plus five, which is 15. You can also say inject without this zero, in which case inject is taking this first component. So you have this first component and accumulator is incremented with this component, accumulator plus component gives you again 15. However, if you have multiplication, you can inject one in this operation. So you say I have a range from one to five, and then I inject this one as initial value in the accumulator, and then components are used to multiply accumulator times component. These are uh, this is performed in the loop, so it is one times two times three, four, five, you get 120, which is five factorial. The same situation happens if you don't have here one, but if you uh, inject the first component, the first component is one. However, if you inject zero, then this multiplication is going to get zero. So, of course, uh, Inject is initial value of accumulator. So when you multiply zero times something is going to be uh, used in that way. Uh, you can of course uh, inject, for example, 10 uh, in this addition. So 15 plus 10 will be 25, okay? Or uh, you can have uh, this uh, construct here also will give the same uh, value. Uh, one thing that is important that if you have this uh, inject that returns 25, same as here. If I say put string, then I'm going to display this. Pay attention that here, uh, this 25 is returned from this expression. Expression returns a value. This is functional programming. However, here, this is side effect. So I have put string that is applied to this expression. Therefore, put string returns 25, but 25 is a side effect. It is not the result. The result of put string is nil. And that's why nil is displayed here. So don't be afraid when you see it. 
uh, it is normal because this is side effect, this five. And this here is result of operation. So these are two different things. Classes that define each iterator are array, hash, range, and file. Uh, each is also returning each line in a file. And that's, we did that already with array, hash, and range, but let us do it with file. So if you have text file, imagine that I have a file that has name textfile.txt, and that I have inside only three lines, first line, second line, and last line. So I have three lines in uh, that file. File is called uh, uh, textfile.txt. Uh, so what you have to create is internal file name. Always when we have file operations, we have to connect external file name that is supported by the operating system and internal file name, which is internal file name, which is uh, used by the programming language. Programming language uses uh, internal file name like stream and uh, operating system uses external file name. That is a string. So in this case, you have file open. So you have the uh, library called file. So it is the class file and open is a method inside that class that has here the argument, the text file.txt name of file under the operating system. And then I create an internal object that is practically file from which I can apply each uh, method to extract line. So f.each is taking one line from a text file a text file is like program that has lines and at the end of each line is end of file uh, character. So each line will be stored as a string in this uh, line variable. So example is here, uh, file open and you have here text file. So you can say equals F or you can say do F and then you have do and uh, part. This is perfectly okay. So file open returns this value. And then here F each line print line. So I print first line, second line, uh, last line. So F each line print line and print is going to uh, display it in this way. So this is the way how to print a file that has these uh, three lines. Uh, you don't need to put here new line because each line has new line at the end. So you are practically having first line with new line and therefore you use print, not put string. Uh, you can open text file and pass uh, that as an internal name with index if you want. So each with index returns two values. Each return just the line. Uh, each returns the line. Each with index returns the number of line. So the line number zero is first line. The line number one, second line. The line number two, last line in this little file. So it is a file each which index returns two value line and number. And you first display number and then line. Loop is an infinite loop, same as in Ada, uh, loop and loop. So loop do block and end, repeats an infinite number of times. Where is this useful? It's useful for uh, testing whether programs work properly. Uh, and then you can re uh, interrupt them with control C or with some other uh, uh, break, for example, if something is uh, that deserves break. So here is an example. Uh, this example is important because it has read and write operation. What I am doing to do, I'm going to check whether my program square root works properly. So I create a program uh, square root, define end. Here is square root of x and have a result is x. And then n times result is 0 0.5 times result plus x divided by result. So this is usual iteration that is creating square root after six or eight iteration, I put here eight. And then result, result, return result. So this is returning from function. So what I want to do, I want to test how this works. And I have loop do 
and enter a number is the prompt that I give to user. For example, enter the number and then user returns two. So what happens now? Now, first, how to read this two? Well, you know, for <coughs> operation put string that we use all time, where, where, is, where is put string, there is also get string. So get string is reading uh, this value as a string. Now, uh, to this get string, I apply method to float. To float is converting string to float. And this is something inherited from object. So you don't have to do it yourself. So string converted to float returns float. This float is now passed to my square root as x variable. And this x variable returns the result. This result is now passed to print statement that is print as a function that has this string and this value here, which is square root. So what you get, you have a square root of two, 1.41, or square root of four is two, square root of 16 is four. Now, I can also uh, break this by saying uh, control C or by entering a wrong result. So I say uh, enter a number X uh, and then uh, result will be score root is not a number. Or if I say not a number, then I interrupt this program. Uh, you can also say X is get string uh, convert to F and then my square root of X. But there is no need to use variable X because it is used only once. So you have functional programming. This is, uh, <clears throat> get string is function that returns string. 2f is a function that returns float. My square root of float is a function that returns float. Print is a function that returns this uh, 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 string and uh, this float uh, printed and then returns uh, nil after that. So it is doing this side effect. And this works in this way. So get string reads from the keyboard. Uh, here is an example uh, where you have an error. Uh, so if I want to make an error, I can say my square root works also when I have two in parentheses or two outside of parentheses, get the same result. However, uh, if I say my square root of zero, since I have here uh, the uh, division by zero, you see result is zero, then when I divide, uh, result is x, x is zero. When I divide by zero, I'm going to create uh, an error, and then here is the traceback that shows all calls, how we come to this divide by zero that creates the problem. And it tells you here is your problem, where it comes from. Altering control flow, we did that earlier with return break, next redo and retry with that in procedural programming. There is also a throw catch and rise rescue this is exceptional handling mechanism in ruby uh, we have that uh, break redo next and retry is applied to for loop so you remember in procedural programming that we said uh, that we have uh, initialization test body update and next statement so there are uh, five destinations one two three four five where we can jump so if we want to jump to next statement, use break command, okay? If you want to jump to update, use next. Redo, uh, jump to the beginning of body. Retry, jump to the very beginning. And then, of course, with update, go to the test. So these are five of them. Then you can have break if condition, break if condition, next if condition, redo if condition. So uh, this is the way how we uh, operate inside for loop for i in one through 100. So this is uh, for i in this range, and then you return these values. Example is here. I have i is zero, and then in each iteration, I increment i by one. So I have do loop, uh, which is uh, going from here to end, and then break if i is greater than 10. So stay in loop and uh, loop, uh, two, four, six, eight, when you come to 12, break, don't uh, display. So you get two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. When you come to uh, uh, 12, uh, jump out to put string and execute this uh, other 
uh, example. And this example say go to next if i is greater than three and i is less than seven. So this example that we studied uh, earlier that has one, two, three, and then four, five, six skips and seven, eight, nine, ten with next is uh, 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 showing. And then if i is greater than 10, then uh, break this. And it is loop and which is usual infinite loop. Rise and return, for example, if you want to compute factorial of positive numbers. So you say define factorial uh, and then rise bad argument if n is less than one. So for negative or zero, you want to return uh, bad argument uh, error message. So you return one if n is one uh, and n times uh, factorial of n minus one if n is uh, uh, any other value. So if I say, give me factorial of five, it is going to give me 120. But if I want to get factorial of minus five, then it is going to say, wait, bad arguments, uh, and it is a uh, runtime error. Uh, and this happens in line 11 of this program, that means here. And this is giving you uh, rise uh, uh, error message, uh, what happens in this program. Begin and end can be used infrequently, something that is executed before program or something that is executed after the program. And then there are plenty of slides here that are describing the time class. Time class is extremely well developed because Ruby, uh, differently from other languages, is giving you the possibility to do benchmarks and to measure performance. And so it is giving you a fantastic time class. Time now is an instance of object time that includes all information about time that you are going to see now. And time now converted to F is giving number of seconds and microseconds since December 31st, 1969 uh, at 4 p.m. So this is what all uh, this uh, uh, current uh, time uh, functions give you, number of seconds from either January uh, 1st, 1970 or this December 31st. So uh, that is a huge, integer that is incremented each second. So if you say time now, it is going you, it is giving you the time. And if you say, okay, tell me uh, to what class this belongs, it is class time. So if you say, show me what is this T, it says uh, current time equals Sunday, May 3rd, uh, 1745, 48. So this is our minute and seconds and it gives you additional information. What you can get is the current year, month of the year, day of the month, current day of week, current day of year, current hour, minute, second, microsecond, and time zone, Pacific Daylight Time, and uh, all other things that you might wish. So it gives you all these components of this object that can provide very precise analysis of time. And of course, uh, you can do that if you want, or uh, you can use that for measuring performance. So here is Ackerman's function one that is famous for taking huge time and the way how you measure, you take time now converted to F at the beginning, uh, time now converted to F after, and then subtract these two times. And this is the run time of Ackerman's function. Here is also uh, benchmarking Fibonacci numbers. This is exponential algorithm, good for benchmarking and measuring time. So I was playing with measuring time here. And let us say a few words about methods in Ruby. Methods belong to libraries and Ruby has standard libraries that come with Ruby in the case of 198 of them. And there are more than 9,000 methods that are currently available. So uh, nobody counts them, but it is a huge number of methods and huge number of libraries. Now, if you want to know how they work, you have to create Ruby information, RI, 
by going to www.ruby.doc and downloading uh, this uh, information that is later accessible through RI from command line. So you say RI help and tells you RI options and names and it gives you various things. For example, you want to learn how to use files, RI file or RI file new. Uh, so these are all things that uh, can be obtained from RI that has documentation. And you can also say RI minus C, find all classes that exist. And you have here gazillion of classes, including class array. But there are plenty of other classes that are available. And of course, uh, you should read that once you are a professional programmer that uses uh, some of methods that are uh, uh, in that uh, set of classes. And of course, if you want to know how the class array works, you say Ruby information, give me array. And then array is ordered integer index collection of any object. Any object means that uh, it is a heterogeneous object, same as in uh, scheme. So it is not like in C or C++ or Java where you have an array of integers or array of whatever characters or whatever, but uh, you have possibility to have heterogeneous objects. And then you can ask, ask, ask for specific method, for example, tell me about time now, and it is going to give you examples also. So that is a very nice thing to have examples that you get. Uh, here is array new, which is same as creating an empty array, et cetera, et cetera. It has even benchmarks that come with uh, Ruby. So there is a benchmark uh, class and you can run benchmarks and have time uh, that is computed in that way. So methods or functions, we already use them. They start with keyword def and you can undefine them if you want them to be not accessible. So define and you have method that has the name and list of arguments. So for example, I want to define a method hello that is putting string high. So if I say execute this method hello, it is going to execute put string high and you're going to get this high here. Now you can say repeat uh, w n times. So you put string w n. And this is polymorphic if you put inside string uh, high, uh, multiplication of string times integer gives you high, 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 three times the string. But if you put inside three and four, then this is not be, uh, be, uh, behaving as uh, multiplication of string, but multiplication of integers. So three times four will be 12, and you're going to get, get here 12. Then, you can say now you undefined hello. That means hello that was available till here is no longer going to be accessible. Then I come and say execute hello and it gives me the error message. So it says in line 15, you have undefined local variable of method. So hello, uh, there is no such method because it is now undefined and it should be that way. Methods have syntax that you have method name and then arbitrarily uh, argument uh, list inside parentheses or without arguments if you work only for side effects. And here are statements and end at the end. Now the method name has this style of writing the names. If you have that uh, you use question mark as the name of name, the, uh, the, of name, this is used for recognizers. This is a good practice. It is not necessary, but uh, it is normally written by terminating with question mark for the recognizer with uh, exclamation uh, point as something that is dangerous. You remember this set with exclamation point in uh, scheme. Well, set is modifying uh, object in situ, and this can be a dangerous operation. So be uh, sure that you understand what you are doing. So put here or equality that we last uh, time used for classes uh, instance setter. So classes instance setter have this equality uh, that is part of the name 
Okay. So, uh, parentheses for uh, are optional. You can either use them or not use them. Is there are no arguments, the empty parentheses can be omitted. So here is a little bit of examples. For example, I can define swap function. And this swap function is unfortunately passing X and Y by value, not by reference. So what you have here, swap X, Y, you uh, have uh, X, Y is Y, X. And when I display that, if I have one, two, I'm going to swap one, two and get two, one, which is okay. But A and B are not swapped. If I say print A, B, I again get A, one. So uh, this here is uh, uh, passing the value, uh, passing the va by value A and B, not by reference. So pay attention that if you want to uh, have something that is outside uh, available, use uh, global variables. So global variables, uh, if you define A and B, these are two global variables. So if I define A is five, B is seven, then I'm going to print this sum, which is A plus B, uh, five plus seven is 12, here is 12. So you can use global variable for some strange uh, uh, reason. Um, Matsumoto in that book that was uh, defined, defining the languages says, don't use them, they are ugly. Well, maybe they are ugly, but uh, I never uh, wrote a uh, few thousand lines of code without having global variables that are, have some parameters that I want to propagate through all components of my code. Uh, this is done by using global variables for sizes, for various other uh, global things. So global variables are useful. They are used, of course, uh, if you have uh, big programs. If you have program that has uh, two lines of code, most likely global variable is not going to be necessary. But if you want to have something that is bigger, then certainly yes. Default values of method arguments. Uh, Ruby has the possibility to put default values of arguments. So uh, those default values are used if the user is not giving the values of arguments. <laughs> so if I have uh, this demo, argument one, argument two, and argument three. So you have demo program of three arguments, one, two, and three. And what demo program is doing is concatenating these arguments. Uh, so argument one plus argument two plus argument three. If I call demo program without arguments, then uh, this program will use these strings, first, second, and third, as default values of arguments. And then you are going to get that this result is first, second, third, this one here. You can also call this program with one single argument, alpha. So alpha is going to replace this first. Uh, and then you will get as the result alpha, second, third. Or you can put alpha beta. Then alpha beta will retain first the second and third that is missing will be the default one, alpha beta uh, third. Or you can replace all three of them, alpha beta gamma. So alpha beta gamma. Now you cannot do this randomly. You can replace one or two or three of, or all, but not one from the end. So practically what you have is that you cannot say uh, empty comma beta gamma. This is not going to work. Uh, there is possibility also to join components. So if you have an array A, B, C, three string, when you join them, it is concatenation without separator and A, B, C will give you string A, B, C. You can say A, B, C join with comma separator. Then you get A, comma, B, comma, C. This is useful for arrays. You can have heterogeneous array. This is string, this is integer, this is string. When you join them with comma, you get A, two, 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 C. Uh, of course, you can also have the possibility of functions with an arbitrary number of arguments exactly the same way as in scheme. This is idea taken from scheme. So you have a variable number of arguments, you have a mandatory argument, arg1, and then variable list of arguments splat X, this is called splat, uh, splat operator. So uh, you have 
this rest that is the list of arguments. So if I say uh, this function variable arguments of first, I'm going to get only one argument and this is going to be empty. This rest is going to be empty. So I get uh, first and nothing more. But if I say print variable arguments first, second, third, then first is going to replace this argument and rest join will be second, third, and then you put them all together, argument one plus rest joint, you get first, second, third. Here it is, okay? So uh, this is giving you the possibility to work with an arbitrary number of arguments. So you can have function that has one argument or two or three or any number. And of course, this one is mandatory. The rest of them are optional, same as in scheme. Return values. Uh, one thing that is important uh, in uh, procedural languages, like uh, for example, C++ or C, uh, that you can return only one object. You can say return and then uh, the value that is returned. Uh, uh, good news is that Ruby can return any number of objects. So you can say return first, second, third, and you get an array that has all these objects. So it is returning an array that contains multiple objects. And this has plenty of applicability. You can, of course, return nothing, in which case return is the last expression that is executed. The last executing statement is returned by default. If you say explicitly return something, you return that value. If you have multiple, pack them in an array and return array. So this is very useful. Uh, here is an example. For example, you have quadratic equation. Quadratic equation typically has uh, three arguments, A, B, C, because this is A, X squared plus B, X plus C equals zero. And there are two solutions, X1 and X2. And now comes X1 and X2 that come as an array of solutions. So this is natural result. Two values come out and you return X1 and X2. So here, when we solve this equation, uh, x squared minus 3x plus 2 is 0, I have to say quadratic equation has here coefficient 1. The coefficient minus 3 is here, and coefficient 2 is 1 here. So 1 minus 3, 2. This returns two values, x1 and x2. And then I can display this x1 and x2. <coughs> you can ask, what is the result of this equation? And if you ask, tell me the class belonging, the class is an array, returns an array. Uh, uh, we can also use directly different expression, for example, return two uh, values uh, for these two inputs. One is sum and product. So you have return sum and return product. And this is an array that has these two, two components. So when I say uh, result is return uh, uh, sum and product of seven, three, when I display this result with this P kernel method P result, it is giving me the array that has seven plus three, <coughs> 10, and seven times three, 21. And of course, the result is an array. And you can take the first component of that array, which is this 21. Uh, that means this is zero component, this is the first component, or you can uh, return for example, uh, this uh, string that has these two values. So this is uh, the, uh, the array that is with put string written in this way. So uh, this is very nice feature that you can return multiple values. Uh, using side effects, side effects can be used in variety of ways. And here is uh, an example. For example, if you want to check whether an object is a palindrome. Uh, so uh, we can have radar, uh, madam, madam with capital letter, which is not palindrome, a man, a plan, a canal, Panama, which is palindrome, or this number, which is a palindrome. And now you want to write a program whether uh, various strings are palindrome. Simple, you say palindrome is a string if the string is equal to string reverse. Of course, string is the frequently used uh, 
uh, data types. So it is a frequently used class that has plenty of different uh, uh, methods. And one method, not surprisingly, is reverse. So take a string and reverse it upside down. And another beautiful thing is that you can compare string with string. And if string equals string, then this is a palindrome. So I can say, OK, uh, for these uh, words in this array A, uh, compute palindrome. And if palindrome is true, then say is. If palindrome is false, say is not. And then a palindrome. So print A is or is not a palindrome. So it is going to print radar is a palindrome. Madam is a palindrome, but Madam with capital letters is not a palindrome. A man of planet canal Panama is a palindrome. Uh, nine through nine is a palindrome, etc. Uh, so uh, this is the way how this loop works with for loop in array. And you see how simple is that you take for this word in array. So it word is now uh, uh, given as string. And then you have uh, uh, here put string uh, is string is reverse is or is not plus palindrome. You can uh, display it in this way. And uh, if you say uh, pal one, you get the same results as before. You can also uh, put uh, a question, what is a uh, 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 class of if I say put Anna, is an a palindrome or not? Yes, it is. But the class, what is returned from here, is true class because it is true or false. Okay, so uh, pal one is uh, nil class because it is uh, returning uh, as a string. Uh, it is pr printing, so it is returning nothing. Uh, and uh, this is more or less all what we have for today. We are going to continue from this slide uh, next time. So what remains to be covered uh, in this uh, class where we are very close to the end is the uh, story about various other methods that are available and a little bit uh, more details about uh, uh, array uh, class because array class has beautiful property that you can have indices that are negative. So if you say index A of minus one, it is going to give you last component of array. So you have uh, array that is going from zero through N. And when you say minus one, it gives you the last component, N minus one or N, whatever it is. Minus two is element before. So it is practically a circular buffer. It is a circular buffer, but it's very easy for making cues with that because you go around uh, with negative indices. So we'll, we'll uh, speak about that next time.